It currently looks like this in Scotland and I thought instead of venturing outside and getting into some scrapes with local yetis, or should I say, the yeti! I would instead play some champ man. Three days after our glorious success against Hibs, we are at home to East Fife. I only need to make a couple of changes as Reddy is injured so I've got Cowan coming in for him and Gravelin isn't suspended for the league game so he goes straight back into the right mid role. As well as the result against Hibs going to my head it seems to actually have went to the players heads as well as it's a very sloppy and wasteful performance. I'll put it down to the classic manager excuse of a cup hangover with Cowan scoring a late own goal equaliser for East Fife and Diabate also getting injured within the first 6 minutes of the game. It's not exactly the greatest of games for us as it finishes one each, dropping two points here and that means we're only 28 points ahead of Albion Rovers in the league. The comeback is on, well, maybe not. And the confirmation of Diabate's injury there for about a month, that means he's going to miss the Celtic game. Straight into the next game again, three days later, and it's away to Elgin City. And we have the chance to mathematically secure our promotion, as we currently sit 32 points ahead of now Morton sitting third. Hadn't noticed them leapfrog Peterhead. And anything but a defeat for me and a win for them pretty much secures it. With the injuries starting to pile up and the Celtic game approaching, I decide to have a team mostly of fringe players, with the only real first team players being Marcos Suarez and the goalkeeper Bartwell. Everyone else has played either a couple of games for us at most or a few games here and there, but we do just enough to make sure the three points are coming home with us. And that also means that we have gained promotion officially, not that there's any real doubt and no doubt we'll be actually officially crowned champions within the next league game or so. And that game is against Morton away. And the injuries aren't really getting any better as through the week Marcos Suarez actually got injured in training so he's out for a few weeks and misses the Celtic game. Huge miss. There's a lot coming back from injuries though so I'm throwing them into this game to make sure they're going to be match fit for the Celtic game and hoping that obviously they don't pick up another injury, but we've got about a week to prepare for that match so should be enough time to get them well rested as well. Just noticed the referee for the game's Jim Walker. If you're watching Jim, hello! Oh brilliant, uh, Wright just scores for Morton 1-0 and another one goes in, Middleton 2-0 Morton. <sighs> right, come on guys, yes. McAllister or left back uh, scoring 2-1. This looks like it might just be a high scoring game. I think everybody's forgone defending the day. Uh, yeah, oh, Graveling. Two each. So we've actually clawed it back within the same half. And Bartwell in a rating of four there. Jesus Christ. And Lorimer makes it 3 2. So yeah, this is a bit of a crazy game uh, to have right before the Celtic game. <laughs> Uh, doesn't fill me with confidence with the defence, uh, but the attack's looking good, that's now 4 to Lorimer, and Lorimer gets a hat trick, fantastic, 5-2, uh, uh, the left mid and right mid rolls seem to score quite a bit in this tactic, uh, probably something to do with them coming late into the box, well, who's that now, Wood, uh, so Wood making it, is it 6-2 now, struggling to even keep count, so let's put Andy Scott on for Graveling and put Alou because he can play right mid, put him right mid. Uh, Scott is just a completely like, B player, like he's he's played like two games for us, it's terrible. Uh, Cowan on and yeah, Sinnott, Sinnott again is very old, he's a player coach, mainly signed up for his coaching about, he's more than anything else earlier in the season. Um, oh, 6-3. Nine goal thriller and we win. Eh, quite an interesting game to win the third division with. But yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. Feels good. That is us set a record, I'm pretty sure, for the third division uh title. For um what earliest win of the title or whatever. Although at, at the end of the season I'll, I'll I'll go through all the stats. But it's on to our next game. It's the big one. Celtic away. Because this is the fifth round of the cup, I don't think we've got any chance of Celtic playing like a reserve side against us, which was pretty much my one and only hope. 
So if you get them, I think if we maybe got them in the third round or whatever, uh, there is a chance that they might just play you know, a, a lot weaker side against us. But yeah, I can't see that happening. Um, we have two players missing. We've got uh, Diabate missing from centre mid and Suarez missing up front. Two huge misses as two of them pitch in with quite a lot of goals actually. So mm, this obviously easily the, the least confident I've been going into a game. I'm really not looking forward to this. But all I'm thinking about is that money at the end of the day. Uh, so let's try and not embarrass ourselves guys. And as you can see, yeah, this is a full-fledged first team uh, from Celtic. Every, I, I mean, every single one of those players are first first eleven. So, yeah, away we go, I guess. I was on the first attack, Dennis Graveling chips into the box and Lennon clears to a gap and then free kick to us. Diawara and comes to nothing. Hmm. So weird seeing, obviously, uh, Neil Lennon playing. But it's Percy managing now. Norwich. No Norwich. Um, Bolton. Guppy. And they've scored. Hartson. Ah, John Hartson. Who looked like the fattest and most unfit player I've ever seen at Celtic. But scored. What was that? Probably. Easily 25 plus a season anyway. But yeah, he was just a big lump of a guy. Come on, Terry. Terry brings it forward. Hartson. Donovan. And Donovan hits the post, and Bartwell is able to recover. So it's Thompson, Sutton, Thompson, <laughs> Wood, come on. No, we, every time we're even going forward, they're stopping us. Uh, Balotti on a yellow, that is not good. Guppy uh, to Sutton, to Lawson, Christ, even Ulrich Lawson, who, who was a pretty dire defender, is getting forward in the act. Sutton clean through in goal and dips it over the goalkeeper. Well, it's bad. It's a bad day when Sutton's breaking through your defence and outpacing your defenders. Again, Hartson, Donovan. It is just all Celtic. Donovan free kick to Celtic, and Donovan <laughs> Landon Donovan scores from the free kick. Three 0 Celtic. Thirty six minutes played and they are three 0 up. Um. Well, Sutton goes off injured, so that's a bonus. Uh, Fernandez coming on. Ooh. We get a shot in and goal there. Agat, Hartson, Thompson, Donovan, Guppy. Yeah, they're just passing rings around us now. We have our two central defenders on a book in each. I can see a uh, sending off in the cards. So half time. We've had three shots on goal, three on target. And yeah, they've had a little bit more of everything. We are not playing that well at all. Come on, guys. Look at that attendance though, 57,715 in the ground to watch Celtic play East Stirling. I can't think of a time that would ever have happened, <laughs> like at all, even in, in the heyday of Scottish football, which this kind of was. Uh, Diawara stopped by Valharan, but Diawara gets the ball back. And we get a free kick and he hits it against the wall. Diawara half volley, but Hedman saves. No, we're, we're really not getting any luck at all. Um, I would try changing it up tactically, but I don't think there's much point because no matter what I do, it would probably just make matters worse for us. Uh, no point in going defensive at all now. 3-0 down. May as well make our changes. These guys can say they can they played against Celtic, so you've got the likes of Andy Scott, who's had like four games total for us. Uh, Cowan and yeah, let's McCauley on. McCauley did play the first few games uh, at the start of the season. He's alright, but no, nowhere near good enough to be in there uh, in the first 11. Come on, can we get a goal? Before full time? No, final whistle. 3-0 Celtic. A fully deserved win for Celtic. I mean, stats wise, we were okay, but yeah, it felt like that whole game would just get battered. Alan Thompson getting man of the match because I assumed uh, probably because he set up all, all their goals. So we're out the cup. <sighs> so if you look at the bank balance, this is before. And this is a bank balance right after that game. So there's a nice wee bump uh, for the, the, the bank balance there. And we're over 2 million. So that was my aim for the end of the season to, to get 
uh, two million in the bank, and that game's helped us do that. I just noticed that we've actually got awful facilities there, so let's go and put in a request um, with the board to improve our training facilities. The annoying thing is, I wish they would spend. I wish I could tell them go like to go right. Just spend like eight hundred thousand to a million on doing like you no know, state of the art, uh, or you know close to state of the art training um, facilities. But instead, they, they do a small upgrade that will cost me like two hundred thousand or so, and it will just upgrade it to like adequate facilities for the third and second division. Then by the time I get to the first division, it becomes awful again, and you, you kind of keep going through this process. Slightly annoying. But anyway, that brings us to the end of the video. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a wee like. Feel free to comment in the comment below. And if you want to see more from me on Championship Manager, let me know. And also, I'll be subscribed would be lovely. Thanks very much. Bye.